Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Spielboden here in Dornbirn. And uh, we're excited uh, this evening for a lot of different reasons. First of all, it's nice to see everybody out there. I think you're out there. Um, I'm excited for a lot of different reasons. First of all, it's the first concert I've played in, let's see, um, almost three months. Ooh. And I just, I was thinking, uh, we were in the back room, and I was thinking, it's been 40-some years since I ever had that much space between gigs. Holy cow. Anyway, we all know what's going on, and uh, we're here to play some, hopefully, some cool music for you. And uh, anyway, before I tell you exactly about that, I want to say that uh, today uh, would have been my mother's 89th birthday. And it's interesting that it's today that we're playing this concert. It wasn't planned that way. So I'd like to actually dedicate tonight's concert to my mother, who died back in January, for those of you who know me. And uh, anyway, so tonight's concert. We, are, um, we were supposed to play a concert here back, uh, uh, now. <laughs> a real concert, you know, with people and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, sadly, of course, we were not able to. So... Um, what we'd like to do is play music from our CD. You know, those things, circle things. Uh, it's called Satin Doll. And you probably know the song Satin Doll. Everybody thinks it was written by Duke Ellington. But uh, we'll talk about that as we go along. But uh, we are going to do music from a great composer, maybe to me one of the finest composers of the 20th century in America anyway. And uh, his name was Billy Strayhorn. And Billy Strayhorn was a pianist, and he was uh, classically trained, and he was a child prodigy, and he started writing songs as a teenager. In high school, he wrote, a, he wrote musicals he was writing. He wrote one of the, what now many, many singers are singing uh, over the years, called Lush Life, piece called Lush Life. He wrote when he was like 17 years old, both the lyrics and the incredible music. And uh, so we're, we made a CD honoring Billy Strayhorn. And... What I did with his music is some of it I changed quite a bit, some I changed a little bit, and some I didn't change much at all. Uh, and so we'd like to play some Billy Strayhorn music in honor of Billy Strayhorn, okay? And our first piece that maybe you don't know was written by Billy Strayhorn. In fact, it was Duke Ellington's kind of theme song for most of, since probably 1940, um, a song called Take the A-Train. And here's Oliver Rott playing some introduction to Take the A-Train. Thank you. 
Okay, that was a little different kind of take the A train, huh? Um, let me tell you a little bit about Billy Strayhorn. Uh, he was from Pittsburgh, and uh, when he was uh, uh, growing up, one of his idols was Duke Ellington. And uh, in 1933, I believe it was, he went to see the Duke Ellington Orchestra. He was born in 1915. So he was a pretty young guy, and he wasn't so brave yet. A few years later, he went to see him again when Duke Ellington came through Pittsburgh, and he introduced himself. And as cocky as he was, he went up and he said, Mr. Ellington, um, if I were you, I would have arranged the last section of that piece like this. And he told him how he would have done the piece instead. And uh, Duke Ellington was fascinated by this guy, and he's like, well, who are you and what do you do? And so he said, uh, um, please, uh, can, can you come and audition? Uh, or I'd like to audition. Can you let me audition for your band? He said, well, I'd, I play piano. And he played piano. And he said, well, I don't need a piano player yet, but I, I can arrange for you. I can arrange and write music for you. And uh, Duke said, uh, OK, come by, and we'll talk about it. And so they talked about it. And he looked at his charts, and they played some of his music. And he played piano for him. And he went, oh, my god. This is my competition. He realized, Duke Ellington being the number one basically band and composer in America at the time, realized that this guy was as good as him, if not better. And so he was a smart, Duke Ellington was quite a smart guy. He said, hey, I better hire this guy before somebody else does, and he goes to another band. So he hired him for the rest of Billy Strayhorn's life. He wrote and arranged music for Duke Ellington, basically behind the scenes. So a lot of times, we, what we think of as Duke Ellington music was often written by and arranged by Billy Strayhorn. So he was kind of the underground guy that uh, wrote so much incredible music, his harmonic knowledge, his rhythmical idea, the way he arranged for the band. Everybody loved him, loved his writing. And um, so Duke kept him around all these years. The first piece we played was, like I said, was kind of Duke Ellington's signature song. And, I obviously redid that piece quite a bit. I rechanged it, the feeling, and there's some odd meters in the bridge section, and so on and so forth. But and the harm, harmony is completely different. But it was still every bit of the melody was correct, right? We played the melody <laughs> anyway. Um, so there's a, a little bit story about about Billy Strayhorn. Um, this, this is another piece. He, he actually wrote a lot of pieces when he first was hired for the band. In 1939, he actually was hired. He went to New York, and he started writing music because Duke Ellington went on a long tour. It was like a, uh, like a seven-week tour, and he, Duke told him, hey, just write some music for the band because uh, there was a, uh, in the United States, there was a fight between the union, and they were not allowed to, to, um, to play and record music for about, I think it was a year and a half, something like that. And so Duke said, hey, write a bunch of new music for the band so that we can do some new material because we can't do the old stuff and record it, so we gotta do it. So it was a whole big thing. So he stayed home and he wrote piece after piece after piece. And one of them was Take the A Train. And another one was this piece. Um, it's called Daydream, beautiful piece.
Daydream. Now that one was originally a ballad, and of course we played it in 3-4. And I changed some of the changes, I, I must say maybe yeah, 40 percent maybe. But most of it was Billy Strayhorn's writing. Um, a little vamp at the end I put in there, that was kind of cool. Um, now Billy Strayhorn was an outwardly gay man. He came out and he was not afraid to walk into a bar and say, I'm Billy Strayhorn and I am gay. And then you, I mean, think about this. This is in the 1930s and 40s. Just pretty brave. I mean, he's black and he's gay. And he just comes right out and says it in a, in a bar. And he did it often. <laughs> so um, and the only... I don't bring that up for any reason except he brought it up, and it was some part. It was an important part of his life, and why he was attracted to certain things and writing maybe a certain way. The band used to call him Sweet Pea. He was a very loving kind of a sweet guy, and uh, he was very small, very short, and uh, but he wrote so many beautiful, beautiful pieces. And this next one, he loved flowers. He wrote a lot of flower pieces, you know, pieces that had something to do with flowers. Um, this next one is called Passion Flower. And uh, this one we're going to do in five. Have fun, Oli.
Once again, this is Oliver Rat here. Yay, the crowd goes wild. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, this is uh, f really this is really fun. Um, strange, but fun. <laughs> um, here's, a, here's another piece that, you know, like, look at this. This is typical. In all these fake books, you know, you have all those songs and stuff. And here's, this is just typical. This is a piece written by Billy Strayhorn 100%, and the name of the composer listed on the sheet is Duke Ellington. Okay, it's not Duke Ellington. This is written by the great Billy Strayhorn. It's called Johnny Come Lately.
Johnny come lately. All right, this next one uh, is uh, called Chelsea Bridge, and most people play it as a ballad. But, you know, the weird person I am, I'm, we decided to play it in a kind of Brazilian seven. Okay, it's called Chelsea Bridge.
Chelsea Bridge. Uh, right. Uh, this next one's kind of a special uh, piece. Billy Strayhorn was always writing music, and uh, he died of cancer in 1967. He was only 52, I think, years old. And uh, on his deathbed, he wrote this next piece. And just, uh, I think, a day or so before he died, it's called Blood Count.
blood count on his deathbed. Whew. Wish I could write like that. <laughs> I'm alive. Okay. Anyway, we've come to our last piece here. Um, thank you so much for joining us. For you, I, I hope there's some people out there. Uh, thanks to the Spielboden for having us here and you guys for putting this all together. Oli, Mr. Oli Virat once again. Guitar maestro. Peter Madsen. <laughs> thanks. Piano. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. One last piece, probably uh, another one, people, another song that everybody associates with Duke Ellington, that's uh, Satin Doll. Uh, and for years, many people didn't know that Billy Strayhorn wrote a lot of this piece. And they often wrote together, so it's hard to some kind separate. But uh, there was even a lawsuit because uh, Billy Strayhorn's family was not getting any uh, money from this piece. And of course, <laughs> the amount of money you probably would make on such a piece played every day by thousands and thousands of people is more than thousands and thousands of dollars every single year. Anyway, so they won, the Billy Strayhorn family won, because they had proof that Billy Strayhorn wrote also Satin Doll.
buy the CD, Satin Doll. It's great. Thanks. <laughs>